Welcome to 719 FPV. I'm Nick Roberts and today we are going to be discussing my experience with the Darwin FPV Baby Ape Pro. Um, so I've been flying this guy for about maybe three months. Um, and when I say that, it's probably like I'll fly this once, maybe twice a week uh, over the course of three months. So really if you're like an everyday flyer, I've not flown this that much. Um, but if you're a casual flyer, um, it's been a decent amount of time. But I wanted to talk just real quick about everything that has gone wrong with my Baby 8 Pro. So let's just get right into it. Probably the second or third flight into this, I had my motor seize up, the back left motor, uh, completely seize up, I could not get it to turn at all. So I took it apart and found that one of the batteries on it, or the batteries, one of the magnets on the, in here, anyway, it's not gonna focus, but one of the magnet, magnets on here, uh, if you're looking at it, you can actually see that there are two there's one completely missing, and then there's one that is broken in half. Uh, that first couple of flights in, that crash, that's when one of the magnets broke in half. Uh, that bottom half completely shattered, and pieces of it lodged itself everywhere stuck to these. That was a big pain to clean out, but I got it to, got pretty much everything out of here, got it back together, and I was flying again, so I was happy. Uh, that goes for another about two weeks, and I have another random incident. I come in, land from one flight, I go ahead, change batteries, I plug in, and black screen with my OSD. Exact same issue that I had with my Tiny Goes. Um, so I was pretty disheartened that I had the exact same issues that the Tiny Go was known for. I came across way too many times. So I was bummed out, but luckily I had a spare camera from those said Tiny Goes. It was the Run Cam Nano I pulled out from the Tiny Go Racer, which is the non 4K version of the Tiny Go. And I swapped it over and bam, got my picture back and I was flying and happy again. So I would have been better off if I got the normal version, saved a, saved a few bucks and just swapped in an upgraded camera anyway. Um, so that was pretty unfortunate. But anyway, I was back flying and all was well for probably a couple more weeks and then I noticed I was getting a lot more shakes and a lot more jello in the video feed. So I figured I had more magnetic flakes, just debris in here that I had to get cleaned out. But when I pulled it off, this uh, one of the entire magnets, it's a tiny little guy but in here, right next to the one that's broken, came out with it. So I am gonna do my best to try to super glue it back into the bell housing. Um, it does have slots right where it goes, so hopefully it stays balanced enough as it is. But as it is right now, I am it's really unflyable with this much of the magnets inside of the bell housing causes way too much vibration and it's it's just too much i'm afraid i'm either gonna burn out that motor or burn out the all-in-one and then the whole drone is toast so i'm gonna try to glue this back in and hopefully it goes well and i'll see you on the next flight video but yeah, I just wanted to share kind of my experience with 
one of the cheapest freestyle drone options out there at the moment. I'll let you decide. Is it too cheap? I don't know. Leave it in the comments what you think. But uh, it's definitely has been a lot of fun. But it has also been kind of a pain. If you were a brand newbie and you were having these problems, it'd probably pre be pretty disheartening. But I guess that's the game. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Love ya. Bye.